Hello and welcome back to the quarterfinals of the Series 12 Challenge hosted by Victory Road and GG Tour. Uh, I am still Jamie Boyd. I am still joined by Costa Dynamos and we are going to be featuring Kyle Geffner once again because we are getting very limited to the amount of capture cards we have available. Of course, yeah. these players uh, that do have access to a ca uh, capture cards are being able to give you guys this stream and we are very grateful to those players that are offering their capture cards. Uh, Kyle once again will be shown uh, on our side uh, going against Hiroto Hayasaki uh, from Japan. Yeah, so a long time no see. We have not seen this team for a while. Um, no, kidding. <laughs> Obviously, we've got the Groudon, Calyrex, Shadow Rider, Thunderous Incarnate, Charizard, Incineroar, and Dashodon over on Kyle's side. And uh, with Hiroto's side, we do see the Zacian Groudon uh, being choices of Restricted, accompanied by the Regieleki, Venusaur, Rotom Heat, and the Incineroar. So quite a spicy team from Hiroto indeed. Yeah, definitely. And Zashin and Groudon was a pairing that I was expecting a bit more than Groudon and Calyrex, uh, because Zashin had been paired with Torkoal and Venusaur very commonly uh, in the one restricted formats that we had. And Groudon is a logical step going from Torkoal uh, when you have access to another restricted. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's still doing very well. We're into the quarterfinals now with both these uh, the, both these pairings. So Zashin Groudon is still going to work out very well. Calyrex Groudon is working out pretty well, it seems, uh, into the quarterfinals yeah. as well. Uh, not a pairing that I expected at all, but... We're still going to have the advantage of the Calyrex uh, over the Zacian. Uh, we do know that it has access to will -O once again. Uh, it can be putting a will -O onto the Groudon as well now, as, uh, as the two Restrictors do need to fear that. So it's definitely going to be an interesting matchup for sure. Uh, with the Venusaur now uh, being being available, as that wasn't available to the previous uh, team, uh, that could be going into the Chlorophyll. That could be even just set up by the Groudon. Uh -huh. on Kyle's side of the field and be able to do some good damage there uh, or potentially sleep powders but no it's just the Regieleki coming out uh, paired uh -huh. with the Groudon for Hiroto's side of the field and it's going to be the Thunderous and the Incineroar coming out for Kyle's side interesting so we do have the Intimidate uh, being uh, uh, essentially exerted onto the Groudon there bringing it down to minus one of its attack we do know that actually the Groudon on Hiroto's side is an Assault Fest variant not something you commonly see Jamie uh, at least when it coming to run on uh, Groudons as they do tend to go for the Citrus Berry or even the White Herb as we've seen uh, quite a bit in the current format but we got Regieleki on the other hand where it can try to exert uh, uh, speed control as such but thunderous is a very good choice for um kyle here as it is the prankster variant and does have access to eerie impulse but then again it is a bit threatened by the groudon yeah, it definitely would be. I can't really do too much at all to the opposing Groudon uh, because it is that supportive variety. And to the Regieleki, it can put an area impulse onto it to put a stop to any of the damage that can come out in that regard. Uh, but no, it's not going to do anything like that. It is just going to be switching out uh, into the Groudon for cards out of the field. That'll be able to take on the Regieleki a lot better and stop this Volt Switch that was coming out oh, as well. Oh, smooth play right there. As we're going to be seeing the Groudon following up with a Stomping Tantrum. Yes, it is at minus one. Yes, that is a Sugar Berry. And yes, that is very minimal damage dealt onto the incineral whilst the, it's going to retaliate immediately onto uh, that Groudon go for the parting shot drop its attack now down to minus two of uh, its stages whilst being able to have that uh, free pivot switch in uh, for any choice that Kyle actually wants to go for between the Calyrex and the Thunderous. Thunderous um, maybe not so much uh, would make as much sense Calyrex could go ahead and apply the damage output that you need right now. You just want to start, uh, you know, essentially going and uh, dealing the damage onto Hiroto's side. But you just got to be cautious of that Regieleki that is still on the field and will be outspeeding. Because it stayed on the field because it wasn't able to Volt Switch. It does still have access to Electro Web uh, to be able to both break the Sash off the Calyrex and maybe put it slower than the Groudon, depending on how it's trained. Uh, it would have to be a pretty speedy Groudon, but you may be able to afford that if you've got an Assault Vest, uh, making up for the bulk that you'd be sacrificing to that speed. So we'll have to see uh, how fast that Groudon is going to be in that regard. Uh, whether Regi Regieleki does go for the Electro Web as well, just setting up the Calyrex so it can be KO'd in the future, or just going for another Volt Switch to get itself out of there to avoid any kind of Precipice Blades uh, that could be coming out from the opposing Groudon. But that was a very solid turn, first turn for Kyle. And not taking any damage from the, the Volt Switch, only taking a little bit of damage from the Stomping Tantrum as well. Uh, but Venusaur is going to be joining the field. That is definitely something that can make use of the speed drops that can come out from Electroweb, uh, but not going to be coming out this turn. Reggie Lackey is just protecting itself. 
Yeah, makes a lot of sense as we are going to be seeing the Calyrex go for the Will-O-Wisp. They wanted to try to go ahead and pick up a burn if it could on the Groudon, but we did see it actually switch out for the Venusaur. Presbus Blades will, of course, not be connecting. will just be uh, hitting onto that Protect, uh, completely blocking any sort of damage dealt onto it. And we do see that it does connect, though, with the Venusaur. Venusaur is weakness policy, so having so much damage dealt onto a potential G-Max option of yours if you're a Hiroto is definitely not what you want to see right now. Yeah, so it's going to limit the, the viability of the, the Gigantamax that can come out from the Venusaur. It could still go for any of the Sleep Powders it wants to go for, uh, but that's going to be some shaky accuracy there. But at this point, the Venusaur has been put pretty low. Uh, it's not going to be doing make, making use of its Gigantamax as much as it could. But as we've already seen in previous formats and on this stream as well, just going for a Vine Lash might be necessary anyway for Hiroto, uh, just being able to get the residual damage starting going. Even though you would most likely use, lose your Venusaur at the end of the turn, if you go for that, that would still be able to get the, the damage over time going as well. The Reggie Aleki is still has access to uh, just go for a Volk Switch here, uh, keep itself safe from any of the Astral Barrages that can come out. Uh, it's not going to take a Precipice Blade either if it does opt to stay in and just go for an Electro Web instead, uh, because the Thunderous did switch in for that Groudon and the Calyrex protects oh. itself, so no damage coming out at all. Interesting, and no Dynamax as well from Hiroto's side. We're just going to be seeing that Thunderbolt and Sleep Powder attempting to come out. I would have said Thunderbolt going into the Calyrex's um, uh, Protect, but the Sleep Powder was only met with the safety goggles that that Thunderous is carrying on Kyle's side. Makes a lot of sense to, to run the safety goggles there. Uh, allows it to take on Venusaur a lot better and opposing Amoongus as well. And yeah, that, now it can just go for a... Uh, it can't even go for a Thunder Wave now. The Will-O-Wisp has, has yeah. popped that option from the, the Venus, uh, onto the Venusaur. Uh, if you'd have gone for a Thunder Wave into the Venusaur, you could have just followed up with the Astral Barrage and picked up the KO. But uh, because that burn was intending to land on the ground and hit the Venusaur instead, uh, that opens the opportunity for Venusaur to just be immune to that Thunder Wave and launch a Sleep Powder into that Calyrex slot. Uh -huh. It did just go for a Protect as well. You you can't go for it into the Thunderous, but you just need to be wary of potential taunt that can come out from the Thunderous as well. Uh, but if you're going just for the taunt, that's not going for anything like an Eerie Impulse into the opposing Regieleki, and that would allow full damage into, into that slot. And it's not Groudon switching in either, it'll be in the Incineroar, so that would still take a reasonable chunk of damage from the Regieleki. Oh, it definitely will. And I think in this scenario, uh, Kyle just wants to be able to preserve that focus, Ash, right? Doesn't want to uh, break it at any point. Needs to try to get rid of this uh, Regieleki, which does outpace it. As it does go for that Electro Web, it connects on both of Kyle's Pokemon. We'll be dropping their speeds down to minus one of stages uh, remaining. As we do see the Frenzy Plant coming out, dealing a lot of damage onto Incineroar, one of the strongest moves naturally in the game. Um, uh, not obviously being able to pick up a KO, but the Thunderbolt, it essentially doing the exact same. Can't pick up the, pay, uh, the KO onto the Venusaur with the assistance of the Burn. And as a result of the Frenzy Plant during the previous turn, this Venusaur is just uh, basically sat around waiting during this entirety of the turn. Yeah, but it would survive a burn at least at the end of this turn so you do need to attack it if you do want to pick up the ko you've got a free hit into that slot if you go for fake out into regieleki you just thunderbolt the, the venusaur and it is taken care of and there's no downside to that play either so i wouldn't be surprised if that is what kyle opts for but maybe you do go for something like a double up into the regieleki and just ignore the venusaur potentially because it will just be ko'd to the burn at the end of the next turn and you just need to contend with it uh, maybe just start to break the focus sash on the opposing regieleki and it looks like it is going to be switching out the Incineroar here, so no fake out and Thunderbolt uh, into the Venusaur. That would have been a very safe play and a guaranteed KO on the Venusaur, uh, but opting here instead to bring in the Groudon to pressure that Regieleki more the next turn. Oh, and Kyle was hoping to try to get the read there. Weren't able to do so. Volt Switch is, as a result, going into um, the Thunderous and allowing itself to finally get that pivot going. We saw that it didn't work the first time Hiroto tried it earlier on in this game one. But now they do have the option of going ahead and bringing that fresh Pokemon in, uh, in hopes, of course, to counter this Groudon. And it's going to be the Zashian. So we finally get that Pokemon revealed from Hiroto's side. It will obviously get that plus one in its attack it's uh, not very uh, much threatened by this um, thunderous unless it picks up a paralysis though that could be quite threatening but no we don't see any sort of paralysis and the sunlight does now fade out 
Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see who's faster between the Groudon and the Venusaur, because we saw the Venusaur still under speed Regieleki, even in the Chlorophyll. Uh, so it is going to be a bulky Venusaur, which is expected with the, the weakness policy. And coming in clutch here, allowing the Venusaur to still be around. Uh, but depending on the training, it will come down to uh, whether the Venusaur can outspeed the Groudon or not. Because you can go for a Thunder Wave into the Zacian, uh, for sure. And But then it would just be whether the Venusaur can pick up the knockout on the Groudon uh, with the Frenzy Plant at this point. You could consider switching back into the Regieleki as well, because that would be immune to the uh, Thunder Waves that could come out from the Thunderous and maybe you just go for an attack into the opposing Thunderous as well because it's looking pretty low if you just protect your Zashin or switch out into the Regieleki uh, you may be able to pick up the knockouts uh, with the uh, with the Weather Ball uh, because even though there's no sun at the moment it's still very low with the Thunderous no switch out into the Regieleki though just going to be protecting itself uh, protecting the Zashin from any potential Thunder Waves that come out but Scroudon's protecting itself as well Oh, very interesting situation going on here. Thunder Wave only being met with that Zashian's Protect. Frenzy Plan only being met with that Groudon's Protect. So a bit of a stalemate situation, but you say stalemate, we do see the Venusaur going down as a result uh, of that burn damage. Yeah, so no Frenzy Plant can come out anymore. Uh, the Groudon is a little bit safer, and whatever comes in, uh, if it's the Regieleki, it's not going to be threatening too much into the opposing Groudon, and then you just get to go for a Thunder Wave and a Precipice Blade. Uh, so most likely going to be the Groudon coming in here. That's going to be the Pokemon that Hiroto wants to Dynamax, so uh, you got to get that going at some point soon. And yeah, it's going to be the Groudon switching in instead of the Regieleki. Uh, that leaves the option for the Zashin to now switch out into the Regieleki and have both Pokemon immune to Thunder Wave, and then just bring in the Zashin at some point in the future. Uh, the Groudon can, itself on Herotto's side of the field can start going for the Max Quakes to start boosting itself up so it can take on the Calyrex a bit better with those actual barrages. It does need to consent itself with the uh, Widows that can still come out in the future, uh, but yeah, it's, it's still definitely the Pokemon that Herotto wants to Dynamax at this point. Uh, Groudon on Kyle's side of the field is a, definitely a viable Pokemon to want to Dynamax as well. Uh, you could just go for the Thunder Wave and the Max Quake or the Precipice Blades into the opposing Zashin. That is very safe. It's going to hit Regieleki that switches in and bring it down to its focus the Zashin is going to deal huge amounts of damage to the Zashin if it does opt to stay in. Uh, but the Zashin is switching out here into that Regieleki. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think Kyle's got some very safe plays to make right here. Uh, going for the Dynamax of their own versus the Dynamax of uh, Hiroto's uh, Groudon. Uh, essentially makes... Uh, well, I think it's the most viable uh, Dynamax that you could go for right now. It can't get O-Code by anything. It just goes and exerts so much damage to whichever target it uh, connects with. It's either going to be Zashian and Regieleki, which is super effective. Uh, Regieleki does have the Sash, of course. Let's not forget. Um, or it's going to be the Groudon. And the Groudon on Hiroto's side didn't even Dynamax. As we do see the Thunder Wave going into the Regieleki slot, of course, not having any sort of effect. It is brought down to its Focus Ash uh, with that one HP remaining uh, after that Max Quake did try to target down that slot. It does actually increase the special defense boost of itself. I don't think that matters anymore right now. This is just purely for the damage um, that's uh, going to be um, uh, set from Kyle's side uh, with the Groudon going for the Max Quake. So we see the Rock Tomb going out there. It does pick up the KO, of course, onto that Thunderous. And this scenario, Kyle has a lot of options. Um, the Regieleki is is down at 1 HP. All that Kyle may need to even do right now is set up a max rockfall, wait it out with Calyrex, and then go on the offensive immediately after. Yeah, and if you bring the Incineroar as well, you get to intimidate the Groudon, and that's going to be the Pokemon that Hiroto wants to Dynamax, so yeah. then you'd have to uh, either switch out the Groudon into the Zashin, and then that could be open to a Max Quake, or just leave in your Groudon and just accept that you're going to be intimidated. But it's going to be the Calyrex joining the field instead. Uh, can exert that will Lewis pressure onto the opposing Groudon, uh, but it, like you said, you could just go for a Protect and a Rockfall just to take care of that uh, Regieleki for sure. And it wouldn't do too much damage to the opposing Groudon, but it would definitely take care of the Regieleki. You could also just go for a max quake into that Regieleki slot and that's a guaranteed yeah. KO uh, into the opposing Zashin that could switch in as well so that uh, maybe covers a bit more uh, than the Rockfall would because if the Zashin switches in it wouldn't care about the Sandstorm uh, mm -hmm. but yeah it's, it's still it's still a pretty reasonable position for both players uh, you can go anywhere anyway at this point because Hiroto didn't need to Dynamax on that previous turn it can just go for the Dynamax with the Groudon uh, here instead and stall out an extra turn so it's going to have one one extra turn of Dynamax against the opposing Groudon uh, still at full HP it didn't take any of the damage uh, so it can still just start to go on the offensive here with its own Max Quakes. And with the Assault Vest as well, on top of any Max Quakes that could be coming out, uh, it's going to be able to take on that Calyrex very well. It just has to contend uh, with a potential burn that could come out. And given the fact that the Groudon on Kyle's side of the field is uh, still outsped, it's going to be quite a slow Groudon on Hiroto's side of the field. So Electro Web wouldn't have helped here. It's going to be Thunderbolt instead of oh. Calyrex. 
Wow, we see the Calyrex not protecting. Just wanted to go ahead and neuter that Groudon with a Will-O-Wisp, and it was able to connect as well. So a very solid play right there. Like you said, Jamie, Max Quake comes out, goes straight into the Regilek. He guarantees the KO regardless of whether it protects or not. But at this moment, um, the Groudon on Hiroto's side being so incredibly neutered, having all of its damage output halved is so, so crucial right now to what could happen and what kind of damage it could, um, you know, exert on to uh, Kyle's Pokemon, but we do see as a result, though, it was more than enough to pick up the KO onto that Calyrex, thanks to the double-up of the Thunderbolt and Max Quake, leaving Kyle now down to his final two Pokemon versus Hiroto's two as well. You know, I'd probably give the advantage here to Hiroto because Incineroar is so low at this point. Even a burned Max Quake is likely to KO it. The Shockerberry has been used up from that earlier Stomping Tantrum. You get to very safely protect your Zashin here, and there's no real downside to that. You can just go for a protect with the Zashin, Max Quake and Incineroar. That should pick up the KO, and then the Zashin should be able to deal with the opposing Groudon uh, because it won't be able to deal with both Pokemon quickly enough at this point. So, uh, yeah, it's a very, very smart preserving the Dynamax a little bit later for Hiroto's side of the field, even though the Groudon was going to be taking that burn. It's still going to be effective enough because the Calyrex was taken so low with the Thunderbolt, because that Incineroar has taken so much damage here as well. Uh, they, Incineroar, even if it predicts the protect that's coming out from the Zashin and it is going to be coming out for Horato's side of the field, even if you go something like a parting shot into the opposing Groudon, you've got to assume yeah. that the Groudon outspeeds. Uh, there is the fake out into the Zashin, uh, which is the play that Carl needs to go for in case it didn't protect, but that protect keeps it very safe here. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense as the Max Quake comes out and still does an incredible amount of damage onto a Zacian through Protect. Yes, it is super effective, but Zacians are just known to be very, very bulky. They can be, at least, as bulky as an Incineral, actually. As um, we're going to be seeing Hiroto's side, Max Quake goes into that Incineral we we're just talking about, and it does pick up the KO. And now we've got a two versus one. Hiroto's Groudon, burnt Groudon, should I say, and Zacian versus Tile. Uh, Groudon as well, which soon will be losing its Dynamax. Yeah, it's, it's going to be um, much easier to take care of uh, with the Zashin here at this point. The Dynamax has gone, but I am very grateful that the sun is still around because we are likely to see something that you don't see every day here. Uh, this <laughs> Zashin is carrying a very there cool move that I am fully expecting to see here because it's going to be even go. stronger than the Behemoth Blade. <laughs> and it has very nice synergy with this Groudon. It's going to be the Solar Blade coming out from the Zashin. When you have the sun up, it is like Solar Beam. It's going to just immediately hit the opposing Groudon for some massive damage. Here we go. The blade's out. It doesn't pick up the KO, but it deals more than enough damage in this scenario. Um, of course, it did have its attack drop, I believe, from uh, ooh, back to neutral from that Incineral. The P-Blades do come out from Kyle's Groudon. Does pick up a KO onto the Zashian, but at this point, Hiroto does still have that immense bulk of HP provided by its Dynamax form. It's just going to be trying to go ahead and uh, use its Max Quake to be able to bring the Groudon down, but it doesn't actually deal as much damage. That burn just paying dividends as to why it was so important that the Calyrex did opt to go for it and did actually connect with it as um, we're in a very awkward scenario, Jamie, I feel, where it's just what is going to pick up the KO, uh, KO first, which Groudon? Yeah, it's, it's probably in the advantage of Kyle because they've got the faster Groudon and the Burns uh, Groudon on hit off the side of the field. You get to protect like uh, Kyle is going for and just whittle away with the burn at the uh, the opposing Groudon as well. There's no real downsides to going for this protect here because there's no sword stance that can come out from hit off the side of the field because it's the Assault West variant. Uh, that is an incredibly safe protect. You might as well go for it and get that extra bit of chip damage as well. Uh, you could consider a Rock Tomb from hit off the side of the field because then you're going to be hitting if you're just going for Precipice Blades, you'd still be hitting the Groudon uh, with, uh, afterwards anyway, so you might as well go for a Rock Tomb, potentially to reduce the speed down. And the Sword Stance here makes a lot of sense. That means you probably just need to connect with one single target Precipice Blades here at this point, rather than having to try and connect with two. And Kiroto does connect with the first one, and it's not going to be oh. enough to two-shot that Groudon does need to connect with two, so it's probably going to come down to Precipice Blades accuracy here. Yeah, and going for the Protect right here could also be a play, as we do know Assault Vest 
uh, Groudon is what Hiroto is running, but no, Kyle's just opted to go for the raw P-Blades. It does connect, and it does pick up a KO. So all of a sudden, where it was two versus one, and we saw the amazing, amazing tech on that Zashi and that Solar Blade, uh, Kyle was able to pull through. Groudon, just go ahead, set up some swords. I'll, I've got swords of my own. I'll just go ahead. I'm still in the sun, and I was uh, able to go ahead and pick up and do the business. And um, I, I think it was quite tough uh, for Hiroto. I think that Will-O-Wisp essentially sealed the game. It was the big uh, player, wasn't it? Because you don't commonly see Calorich Shadow Riders actually carry that. You would typically see Spectrias do it, but not with this restricted kind of status that it has now through Calorich. Yeah, it was very, very crucial. They're able to uh, neuter that crowd on very effectively, even though it was able to pick up the uh, knockouts on the Calyrex and the Incineroar because they'd taken so much damage previously. It was just not quite enough in, in, into the opposing crowd on. And to be honest, I was a little bit underwhelmed by the solo bleed. I was expecting some huge damage, but the Intimidate was pretty crucial in that regard. Without an Intimidate on the session, uh, that would have done close to, what, 90% to the crowd on, and that would have been really cool. Uh, but it is nice to see all these tech moves coming out as uh, anyway. Uh, the solo bleed can still definitely play a factor going into this game the Zashin doesn't get intimidated and yep. hits sort of into the ground on that to be doing a much more damage so maybe needs to take care of the Incineroar a little bit sooner uh, the Dynamax for both players was very late in that game there were probably potential opportunities to go for the Dynamax a little bit earlier and start getting the damage out uh, a little bit sooner uh, Groudon makes sense as the two Pokemon that are going to be going for the Dynamax uh, with these two players uh, maybe the Venusaur would be a pretty good uh, Dynamax candidate as well but when it was switched in and taken so much damage and the burn as well uh, it became less viable to go for that Gigantamax option. I was going for the Sleep Powders, but it hit one into a uh, Save to Goggles and then just going for a Frenzy Plant into an Incineral switch in as well. Uh, probably does want to make use of the, the Gigantamax with the Venusaur, especially if the Granul is just going to be will -Oist and then it's, its attack is cut in half and then the Dynamax isn't as effective in that yeah. regard. Maybe keep the Venusaur safe, maybe even just consider leading it straight away and going on the offensive and just start dealing out the damage with the Vine Lash and, and start boosting yourself up that way and just getting the damage down before it takes any of the damage uh, coming out. Uh, so we'll have to see if that is the option uh, change here for uh, Hiroto, but it's going to be just Incineroar and the Groudon uh, into the opposing Calyrex and Incineroar. Yeah, so a bit of a change up right here from uh, both of these players. We do have the uh, Intimidates on the field. Of course, the one that's going to be most crucial right now is the one coming out from Kyle's side. Being able to just go ahead and neuter the damage output of that Groudon is so, so crucial, like we did see um, essentially with uh, the previous game where it did actually get burned. So having that will o -Wisp, like we mentioned, is quite interesting because you can force scenarios and kind of um, essentially intimidate uh, per se, the Groudon out for a switch here and maybe take advantage of it, but this Incineroar on Hiroto side, it kind of covers uh, the Calyrex. Sure, it's Focus Ash, but Calyrex doesn't ever want to run into a Dark-type uh, Pokemon, especially one like Incineroar. Yeah, and just going for the fake out into the opposing Incineroar is very safe because your Calyrex can't be faked out, and if, if the opposing Incineroar is faster and fakes out the opposing Incineroar, that's still putting a stop to it, getting a, an attack off that turn. Venusaur switching in is pretty smart here as well because of the Willows that could have landed into that opposing Groudon. Uh, that is exactly what we are seeing, but the Venusaur gets to switch in and it doesn't take any damage here apart from the burn, so that is much more beneficial for the Venusaur. Yeah, definitely, as it cannot now be um, uh, Thunder Waved if, for whatever reason, Kyle did actually opt to bring the Thunderous yet again. So, a similar scenario as to what we saw in the previous uh, Game 1. But in this case, though, uh, it's still relatively healthy. So, Hiroto can actually opt to G-Max it if they do want to. Getting the G-Max Vines here makes a lot of sense. You could even pick up a KO onto the Calyrex if it does decide to stay in. So, that's kind of what I'm seeing uh, from Hiroto's side. Uh, because we saw that the Groudon, even though it was Dynamax in game one, it wasn't able to deal the damage that it really needed to and gain that speed as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, the Gigantamax coming out from the Venus. So you could consider going for a Sleep Powder, and if the Sleep Powder connects into the opposing Calyrex or the Incineroar, that would be very beneficial. Uh, but it looks like we are going to see the Gigantamax here. Most likely, you would assume it's the Venusaur instead of the Incineroar. Uh, the Incineroar would be a pretty reasonable into the opposing Calyrex, but yeah, you want to be getting those those Vine Lashes out. Maybe go for the Quakes as well to start boosting your special defense. Uh, but it's yeah. going to be Slice Shock that's coming out from the Calyrex as the uh, Psychic move of the choice. So that wouldn't care about any Quake boosts. And the Quake shouldn't be strong enough to KO the Incineroar, especially because it's got that Sugar Berry as well. It is just going to be the G-Max Vine Lash here. 
which makes a lot of sense. It does go into the Calyrex slot, and actually, um, uh, the Calyrex doesn't take as much damage as I would have anticipated there, which does uh, actually mean it may go ahead and survive this turn unless there is a double up. Psyshock coming out, though, from that Calyrex straight into the Venusaur. It does deal a lot of damage, but guess what? It also procs that weakness policy. That weakness policy now does give it the plus two in special attack boost. Parting shot moving, uh, fr coming out from the Incineroar over on Hiroto's side into the uh into tiles in Sinral is very very crucial in case there is any sort of flare blitz double up here onto the venusaur which honestly i think may even pick up the ko here given that the sun is still on the field It'd be very close it depends on the bulk of the venusaur because uh, we did see it was a pretty slow one that's got room for bulk at this point and it's, yep. it's just going to be zashian switching in uh for uh, that incineroar here we'll have to see if that flare blitz is landing into the venusaur and if it is enough to pick up the ko as well uh with the sun boost it is oh. just not enough but that burn oh. is going to come in clutch Wow, very, very clutch burn indeed. And that that's essentially what you get for damage over time, sure. Um, uh, Kyle right now hasn't opted for any sort of G-Max uh, Venusaur strategies, or should I say Charizard, given that's the one that's on their team. But they don't need it, as you've got um, the burn to be able to go ahead and do that at a smaller scale. Uh, but I think, Jamie, the Venusaur kind of did its job, didn't it? Uh, sure, it would have been amazing if it stayed, especially given the fact that it's got speed, it's got plus two in the special attack, but it was able to get the vines, the da damage over time dealt onto Kyle's side. Yeah, it's never wa uh, wasted uh, Gigantamax if you just get the damage over time move off and then get KO'd. Uh, that's always going to be a benefit. Uh, it would have been very nice to keep the Venusaur with a weakness policy boost as well, but just not bulky enough to be able to survive. Uh, it would have been very good to just go for a Max Quake and boost up the special defense even further, uh, but it's unfortunate they went down for Hiroto's side of the field, but you still got... There's Ashin in the ground on switching in, but do need to still be con concerned about the burn. Mm -hmm. come out from the opposing Calyrex. It will depend on which target is going to be uh, targeted down by that Willowisp. You've got a guaranteed attack into that Groudon. Uh, you could be Willowisping a potential protect from the Zashian though as well. That might be the one that is more beneficial to get burned as well, especially because the Thunderous is switching in, which would be immune to any Precipice Blades or anything that would come out from the opposing Groudon. Uh, but no protects here, and Willowisp oh. does connect with the Zashian. It really does, and that is so, so big, uh, so crucial um, for Hiroto. Not going to be able to go ahead and once again deal the kind of damage output that you would expect from such a ferocious Pokemon. Um, uh, of course, Thunderous uh, being uh, the Pokemon that's receiving all of that damage, it's uh, not very effective. It does have that electric typing, and uh, thanks to the flying typing, it gets to completely avoid that Precipice Blade. So Calyrex is going down for this game to uh, it essentially has done its job. It's been able to go ahead and get a Will-O-Wisp, a very crucial one, dealt onto the Zashian. It puts on pressure. It is kind of scared from Hiroto's uh, Incineroar. So I think Kyle's just going to wager on this Groudon going into, it, uh, going into this turn and trying to maybe get a Dynamax off with him. Yeah, Groudon is definitely going to be the, the Dynamax Pokemon for Kyle's side of the field here. But you could consider going for a Swords Dance, and if you switch into the Incineroar, that will get an Intimidate down onto the Burn Zashin as well, and the opposing Groudon wouldn't do too much damage. There's definitely an opportunity yep. to go for a Swords Dance, uh, but you do can very viably just go for that uh, Dynamax straight away. Uh, the Max Quake would be able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Zashin, and if you Dynamax, uh, the Incineroar and the Groudon on Kyle's side of the field are really not doing too much damage to you at all. So uh, yep. either option is entirely viable, and it is very very comfortable for Kyle at this point uh, with the burn on the Zashin the Solar Blade's not going to be doing as much damage the Behemoth Blade's not going to be doing as much damage uh, if it does go for that and um, the Dynamax as well uh, so yeah the, be, being able to preserve the, the Dynamax being able to take care of Orotos uh, even though the Venusaur managed to get off those Vine Lashes uh, just going to be a Dynamax straight away from Kyle's Groudon no need for the Sword Stances at this point and just going to be able to launch off some massive Max Quakes and be able to shrug off whatever Hiroto would want to throw at it for at least the next few turns well, exactly, and I think uh, that's kind of the scenario um, that Kyle's going for, given that Hiroto no longer has Dynamax to try to go for it. But we do actually see the Solar Blade. Solar Blade's coming out from the Zashian. Unfortunately, we will not be able to see the amazing animation escorted by it, but we will see the damage dealt onto the Groudon, which is negligible. Um, we see Thunderous, though, going for the Thunderbolt, dealing very good uh, chip damage onto the Zashian, and this Max Quake double up. Oh, no, it's not a double up it actually goes into the groudon slot instead of the zashian it nearly
nearly guarantees that two hit KO there. So that could potentially be a roll there. As we do see Groudon over on Hiroto's side going for uh, the Precipice Blades. It does connect with um, Kyle's uh, Dynamax Groudon. But of course, Thunderous completely is immune to it. It was a little bit of a missed opportunity to just take care of the, so the Zashin at that point. And then the Incinera on the opposing ground, and you saw how little the Precipice Blaze did to the opposing ground on. Solar Blade's still doing a decent chunk, even though the, you've got the burn on the Zashin. Uh, you could consider switching out to just intimidate the, both Pokemon again. You could have done that on the previous turn, uh, but it's opting to just stay in and get some chip damage down with the Thunderbolt. And now the Max Quake would definitely be able to pick up the knockout onto the Zashin and would do some very good damage to the opposing Incineroar if it wants to switch in and intimidate the Groudon. Uh, but it's still looking pretty comfortable for Kyle at this point. So that was some reasonable damage with the Precipice Blades and the Solar Blades. Uh, but you yeah. still need to do that another two times to be able to knock out the opposing Groudon. Maybe even a third if the citrus berry just tips it over the edge you can probably take care of the zashi in this turn uh, to be able to, to put a stop to the solar blade and you're not even taking a solar blade this turn because the zashi is switching out into that incinero and, and once again it makes a lot of sense because you just want to be able to reduce um the damage output of this uh grout on over on kyle's side we do see the thunder is actually switching out as well uh, for an incinero of their own so we just essentially with this kind of structure and uh, you know uh teams that we currently have you're just wanting to try to lower whatever damage that each pokemon can deal and we do actually see hiroto's also carrying a shukaberry incinero at minus one now on tile side it's not even able to bring it within uh, the orange range of its hp it does once again boost the max uh, the special defense of both itself and its partner but that doesn't really matter right now as all of hiroto's pokemon remaining pokemon are physically uh, you know offensive so rock tomb though on the other hand is some sort of uh, form of speed control that hiroto can use but essentially in this situation i think it's kind of like what you mentioned uh, jamie it's just all about battering down the hp of your opponent's pokemon and just hope that you've been able to do it first yeah, it would have been able to probably pick up the knockout on the Thunderous if it stayed in, uh, and then it did switch out into uh, into the Intimidated Incineroar. Able to survive the attack, even with after uh, the final round of the beating of the Vine Lash as well, the Incineroar is able to survive and able to uh, go for a fake out if it wants to, or switch out and preserve Intimidate, which could be very useful against the very physical team that Herota has left at this point. One more turn of Dynamax for the Groudon uh, can still do some very good damage to the opposing Incineroar and should be able to pick up the knockout on this turn because the Shukaberry has been used up and the Zashian would go down to the Max Quake as well, uh, most likely. So that slot should be KO'd by this Max Quake from the opposing Groudon. Uh, but the opposing Groudon on Roto's side of the fields can still do some very good damage to the opposing Incineroar. Or the Thunderous if it's switching in. If you go for a Rock Tomb into that Incineroar slot, you either KO the Incineroar or do some very good damage to the opposing Thunderous and maybe even pick up the KO, especially after this extra chip from this fake out. And see, uh, we're going to be seeing the ground on go for the Max Quake right now. It's hoping to go and pick up the KO onto this Incineroar, which it does on Hiroto's side. So we do see the scenario where Hiroto is down to their final two Pokemon. They do have the Zashian in the back, but it is unfortunately burnt. So uh, once again, that will o wisp on the Calyrex paying complete dividends here. Precipice Blades comes out. It does not miss. It does successfully connect with uh kyle's growled on but once again thanks to that dynamax hp uh we just see it essentially just deal minimal damage it's just chip damage at this point which is definitely not what you'd expect yeah, that's not what you want at all. And you've got the opportunity to just switch in Incineroar again, even though it's so low that you could just get the Intimidate. You could even just protect your Groudon and sacrifice the Thunderous. The uh, Thunderous would be able to get some reasonable chip damage into the opposing Zashian, maybe able to survive the Behemoth Blades at this range. Uh, if you intimidate it with the Incineroar, you'll definitely be able to survive and get the damage off with the Thunderbolts. And then just eventually be able to sw switch in your Incineroar, get the fake out pressure as well. If you do yeah. switch in the Incineroar immediately and get that Intimidate, that keeps the Groudon a bit more safe this turn and may allow it to survive even some Something like the Solar Blade that would be coming out, uh, but if, if you opt to uh, just allow one of your Pokemon to get KO'd, then you get to go for a fake out in the future turn when that Incineroar hits the field. So it's it's down to Kyle what he's going to prioritize there, whether he wants the fake potential fake out pressure and just sacrifices a Pokemon, or he does switch in the Incineroar immediately to get that Intimidate down. And it is going to be the Groudon switching out, so that should allow the Thunderous to survive whatever the Zashian would want to throw at it, even if it was a Behemoth Blade into the Thunderous, should be able to survive and get some good damage here with the Thunderbolt.
Yeah, and uh, you do have the fake out if, for whatever reason, the Incineral does survive uh, for the immediate uh, following turn, the subsequent turn, as we do actually see the Zashian did opt to go for that Protect their Thunderbolt, is going to be um, met with it, and the Groudon does go for the Rock Tomb, so very, oh, and actually survives the Thunderous there, so uh, e even regardless of what the situation is here, I think Hiroto has to hope to get that double Protect if they can, and maybe still exert pressure in whichever way, shape, or form they actually can to pick up any sort of KOs. Yeah, you've got to go for a double protect to this point with the Zashin because you've got to expect there's a fake out and a Thunderbolt heading that Zashin's way. There's no real downside to going for that attack and no. then you'd be able to put it very low and in range of whatever other attack you'd want to go for at this point. But at least that would allow the Groudon to take its pick of a KO. But the fact it's got Rock Tomb instead of Rock Slide means it can only KO one of them because Precipice Blades won't affect the Thunderous. Uh, there is the fake out into the opposing Zashin as well. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we just see the double up there. But just Torn instead, no Thunderbolt. Yeah, no Thunderbolt, so maybe just trying to make sure that it cannot protect uh, any uh, any other time past this, as it just wants, uh, at this point, Hal just wants to go ahead and pick up a KO, essentially, and uh, we see Hirota was able to do just that, but onto the Thunderous. Thunderous essentially just uh, gone ahead and just gotten whatever utility it can out of that, uh, you know, uh, last uh, ending taunt it could there, and this scenario, I think, I don't know, uh, Jamie, because I think the HP of both of Kyle's Pokemon are still quite small and it's just about uh, essentially down to if solar blade uh, does want to try to come out if it can and maybe get a crit i'm trying to think of the win cons right here yeah, no, I, I, I think this is back in Hiroto's favor at this point because yeah. the Groudon was forced to set up the Sun again. The Sun had been gone for a, a few turns at that point, uh, but now that the Zashin doesn't have to go for Behemoth Blade, Behemoth Blade and Precipice Blade would have been very close on the Groudon if it was able to KO. I reckon a Solar Blade and a Precipice Blade should be able to pick up the knockout on that opposing Groudon. That is what no, Zashin now has access to once again. So really, you just need to be able to connect to Precipice Blade with both of, on the Incineral and the Groudon with Hiroto's side of the field because this oh. Solar Blade is able to be fired off once again with the wonderful animation yeah that's in range of precipice play it's almost oh. that here we go. So what's going to happen? Can Kyle's Groudon pick up a crit? If it can, onto the Groudon. No, it cannot. It does go ahead and pick up the KO, though, on the Zashian. And Hiroto's uh, Groudon has to go ahead and oh, connect oh, with no. both of them. Oh, oh no, that's no, the Sugar that's Berry, not the Sugar Berry. Oh, My God, Jamie McEvil. <laughs> <laughs> we, see, we see the Precipice Blades coming out. It is not Precipice. Yeah, it it is. is Precipice. <laughs> and it picks up both KOs. So all of a sudden, from nowhere, Hiroto's just gone ahead and forced the game three, Jamie. Yeah, I think maybe switching out the Groudon was the misplay there because it made sense to intimidate and allow the Thunderous to survive, but maybe not calculating the fact that it would reset the sun on the field. The Behemoth Blade and Precipice Blades was almost certainly not enough to be able to pick up the knockout on that Groudon. Then you get to just follow up with the with the Precipice Blades again, and if that connects, you'll be able to take the game. But yeah, that having access to Solar Blade once again just tipped it over the edge there and allowed that Groudon to be able to, to pick up the KO. So uh, we are going into a game three here, and that was so back and forth. It could be anyone's game it looked like it was in Kyle's yeah. favor for a lot of that it seemed like seemed like the Groudon was going to sweep through the game effectively because their hand the possession was burned so the baby wasn't doing too much damage but yeah may, maybe opting to switch out the Thunderous for the Intimidate on the Incineral or protect your Groudon and just allow the Thunderous to go down to the uh, opposing Rock Tomb because then the sun is not on the field you can just go for a Precipice Blade and you should be fine in that regard but yeah that was that was a very interesting end game and a good showing of why you would run Solar Blade on your Zashin because Behemoth Blade would not have been enough there Exactly. All you non-believers of Solar Blade Zashian has basically been given the feedback that you needed. It is a very cool move. It is very viable to when, uh, you know, for example, Groudons aren't Dynamaxed and, you know, you can't completely utilize the Behemoth Blade. So um, moving on, of course, going into game three. It was so, so close that game two. Could have gone either way. What are your thoughts, Jamie, going into this? Are we going to see a similar situation um, where the G-Max uh, will be utilized? for Venusaur over on Hiroto's side, or do we see a switch up for any reason? I, I would consider bringing the Charizard to this game. The Rotom is being left on the bench. It can still do some very good damage. Maybe the Assault Vest will be able to take on... The Groudon having the Assault Vest will be able to take on the Charizard, but it's very reasonable into the opposing Zashian. Uh, the Regieleki would be able to do some reasonable damage as well, uh, but that was left on the bench in the previous game. It was... It was 
it was there were no electric types coming out for Hiroto uh, at all in that previous game. So if that is the case once again, you can just bring your Charizard and uh, be able to just launch off those GMAX wildfires very safely at this point. So uh, that is definitely a potential adjustment that could come out. Uh, the Widow is, is very crucial on the Calyrex as well. You can see how much damage reduction it does to the opposing Zashin and the Groudon. It's very, very good in this matchup. And you yep. just need to be wary of which Pokemon would be uh, getting burns. You're almost certainly going to get into a position where you would be burns because the Calyrex is outspeeding everything. Uh, only really a Sleep Powder would stop that from the opposing Venusaur, but they opted to go for uh, the G-Max Vine Lash instead of going for those potential Sleep Powders instead. Uh, Venusaur is almost certainly still the best Dynamax candidate for, uh, for Hiroto's side of the field as well, and being led with it immediately with the Incineroar uh, may indicate that Hiroto wants to go on the offensive immediately in the face of that Calyrex and Incineroar again. It really does, because I think um, what Hiroto's, uh, you know, recognizes is that Kyle's not scared for going for the Psy Shocks onto the Venusaur, uh, any sort of super effective, um, you know, damage onto it. So they want to still try to benefit, A, obviously from the residual damage over time that they could deal thanks to the G-Max Vine Lash, or B, if there's any sort of scenario that the weakness policy can be procced and Hiroto's Venusaur will be allowed to get a subsequent uh, attack off, essentially. Yeah, we saw the previous game that the Psy Shock and the Sun boosted Flare Blitz was enough in combination with the burn, but that's not the case at the moment. There's no Sun on the on the field, so the Venusaur is very safe to just go for its G-Max, and then it'll be able to do some huge damage uh, if it gets its weakness policy activated from a Psy Shock. That would still chunk it, but it wouldn't be able to do uh, nearly enough, and you'll be able to fire off with a big boosted uh, G-Max Burn Lash, uh, or just even a Quake into the Incineroar as well would do some very good damage. But you mm -hmm. could still consider going for Sleep Powders. You could go for a Fake Out into the opposing Incineroar and Sleep Powder of the Calyrex. If you're confident you'll be able to survive a Psy Shock, that would be a pretty risky play if that is the case, but it's going to just be preserving that Venusaur instead. Uh, going to be probably the Pokemon that held off on to Dynamax, but not yet. Oh, interesting. It's going to be for the Zacian. So the Zacian is still susceptible to a Flare Blitz if Kyle's opted to go for it. But no, Kyle's uh, gone ahead and switched out that Incineroar for the Charizard that we were talking about just before, Jamie. Calyrex going ahead, protecting itself. It does not want to break its Focus Sash just yet or gets, uh, you know, have the parting shot, uh, you know, inflicted onto it, having its special attack drop. No, that's not the scenario. Incineroar is still on the field because uh, Calyrex has just gone ahead and blocked its ears. Yeah, now Charizard is in a great position here. The sun isn't up yet, so you'd have to uh, switch in your own Groudon to get that uh, solar power going. But the Charizard is in a really good position against the opposing Incineroar and the Zacian. You do have to contend with the potential parting shot that could come out to reduce the, the damage output from the Charizard. Uh, it's, it's a Pokemon that almost certainly Kyle wants to go for a Dynamax in this game. If it was brought to the game, it's most likely the one uh, that he'd be considering going for. Uh, but without the Sun Boost yet, it would be not as effective uh, going for the Gigantamax uh, just yet. So maybe you just want to keep it safe, switch out or protect it at this point. Wait until the Sun is on the field to make the best use of your Dynamax. Dynamax. And the Charizard here is not going to be Dynamaxing yet, it is just going to be protecting itself. Yeah, just biding its time right now, it wants to be able to position itself in a very good situation to go ahead and unleash the G-Max damage over time, damage that uh, we've seen Hiroto go ahead and take advantage of. Ooh, we see the Astral Barrage and then Sacred Sword maybe anticipating a switch in there, uh, or maybe even a misclick, who knows. Uh, of course, the Calyrex is immune to that fighting type move thanks to its ghost typing. Yeah, it was almost certainly predicting the Incineroar switch in there would have been able to do some very good damage. And it makes sense as well. You could have just easily picked up the knockout on the opposing Calyrex by just going for Behemoth Blade and any attack from the Incineroar as well. Uh, but that was just free damage with the Astral Barrage and didn't use up a turn of Dynamax either. And now the Incineroar could very easily be in range of a sun-boosted Max Airstream at this point. So you could just switch into the Groudon, get that Airstream now into the opposing Incineroar. Usually Incineroars, it's going to be very close if it's able to survive that uh, Airstream that's coming out, especially because it is based off Hurricane, as we can see from the open team sheet, slightly stronger than the Air Slash. Uh, but with that extra chip damage from the Astral Barrage, should be in range if, the, if Kyle just opts to switch in the ground on this point. But actually, no, not going to be switching in at all. Maybe just content with the Astral Barrage. We saw how much it did to the opposing Incineroar. An extra Astral Barrage as well might be enough to just tip it over the edge so that even without the solar power, uh, the Airstream would be able to pick up the knockout onto the opposing Incineroar. And then you can just go for a G-Max Wildfire into the opposing Zashin the next turn because it won't be able to do too much damage to the Charizard, even though it would be the Behemoth Blade that uh, would uh, hit be hitting into a Dynamax, and the Cataract still has a Sash as well, so we can just keep launching off this Astro Barrage. Yeah, it has no reason not to. Sure, there could have been a reason to go for the Will-O-Wisp, but damage is the most crucial thing that will dictate 
this game. In the end, as Behemoth Blade is going to be allowed to come out, goes into the Charizard slot, will deal an incredible <laughs> amount of damage. Yes, of course, it ignores the fact that you are uh, Dynamax there. It attacks as it normally would. Airstream, on the other hand, thanks to the double up, that uh, chip damage dealt from the Astro Barrage, two Astro Barrages in a row, is enough to pick up a KO. Of course, as we do know that this Charizard is Life Orb. It does have that benefit of the additional damage output that it could go ahead and unleash onto its opponent so in this scenario jamie uh we've got plus one in speed for both the calyrex and the charizard and you do not want to see this if you're hiroto especially when you're bringing in the groudon which brings in the sun yeah, you kind of need to bring in the ground at this point because Calyrex with a plus one speed boost should be outspeeding even Venusaur in the sun, especially because we've seen it is a very bulky Venusaur and nice and slow as Calyrex would have been able to outspeed it here. But now you just get to go for an Astro Barrage KO the Zacian and you get a solar power boosted G Max yeah. Wildfire into the opposing Groudon. If it goes for a Dynamax, it'll probably be able to live with the Assault Vests, but then that's still taking a huge amount of damage, especially because the extra chip from the Astro Barrage as well. And then the Focus Sash is still intact on the opposing Calyrex. You have to go for a Rockfall uh, to be able to KO the Charizard, and then that's not really hitting the Calyrex. You'll be able to break the Focus Sash, at least with the uh, Sandstorm that would happen. Yep. But then you've still got the Calyrex that can just go for a Psyshock into the opposing Venusaur uh, that won't be able to go for a Gigantamax anymore and should be in range of the Psyshock. So uh, this is incredibly awkward for position position for Roto. Opting to go for the Dynamax with the Groudon, uh, but yep. that's that's going to probably allow it to survive the G-Max Wildfire, but that means that the Venusaur, it can just be taken care of by the Psyshock at any point uh, if it is uh, it, it, it may be able to survive that attack based on the previous damage but mm -hmm. uh, this, we'll have to see how much this uh, G-Max Wildfire is going to do as well because it's a very safe just Astral Barrage take care of the Zashin uh, it could protect itself like it is here uh, not give that uh, Grimnade boost yet but G-Max Wildfire is going to hurt this crowd on yeah, this turn is all about damage, and <laughs> the Kyle's got plenty of it. We're going to see Astral Barrage go ahead, and we can see the reasoning as to why you go for the Assault Vest on that Groudon. It bolts it, but guess what? It doesn't bolt the G-Max Wildfire in the ray, in the Sun, sorry, uh, boosted by Solar Power, by Life Orb, by it's a Charizard, by so many things. We've got the residual damage on uh, over time onto Hiroto's side of the field, so Charizard has just done its job. Sure, it has been given commendations and whatnot for its, you know, outrageous performance of just being out on the field for two to three turns. It just goes ahead and unleashes an airstream, wildfire, it's done its job, it can go and relax on its Pokeball. Because guess what? The wildfire is enough to pick up the KO. So sure, the, you know, Zash Zashin went ahead, protected, but in the end of the day, it didn't matter. Look at that HP. Bar. It is just so, so down, and all Kyle needs to do is essentially protect himself for a couple of turns, and it seems like he's going to be rounding off this uh, best of three set. Not even protect themselves. They just bring in Incineroar and fake out the Venusaur and click Astral Barrage and you yep. win the game. Exactly. Like th There is no Protect or Max Guard that can come out from the opposing ground on. That is in range of Astral Barrage. Yep. And then just next turn, you'll be able to either Astral Barrage or Psyshock the opposing Venusaur. So that Charizard adjustment was very crucial for Kyle. Mm. And you can see how effective it was there. Uh, being able to get the Airstream boost that was faster than the Zashin and then just do so much damage. Even with an oh. Assault Vest, Assault Vest Dynamax Pokemon still took about 80% from that move. It's one of the strongest moves that can come out of any Pokemon, so uh, yeah, it's, yep. it's just, and then you just get the uh, residual damage on top of that. It seems that Hiroto knows what is coming at this point. You just get to click Astral Brush and fake outs. That caves the ground on the next turn, the Calyrex, because it's got the speed boost as well. Uh, even the Sam was even up, so it's definitely outspeeding, then just KOs with an Astral Barrage. So a really, really strong adjustment for Kyle there with that Charizard. Able to take that third game and launch themselves into the semifinals. Too much damage to take. Oh, what, what is it? Uh, too hot to touch. I think that's the situation. We've got Hot Dog going ahead and pushing itself forward into, I believe, top four right now. So very, very powerful display and a show of, you know, the sun core. We saw both of the trainers have the sun modes on them, but we saw that Charizard was able to prevail over that Venusaur core in the end of the day. So, of course, ladies and gents, that was the top eight right now. We will be moving on to top four we are going to just a bit of a disclaimer here we are quite limited on capture cards so fingers crossed someone that does have a capture card is able to progress up until the final uh, but we will be giving you updates regardless thank you for joining us we're going on a very short break and we will be back previewing that top four